this is my town where I live, uh, Malmö, and we have this extraordinary building. That the urology department was suggested to be on top of this, but it was <laughs> not, unfortunately, it was not accepted. I'm going to talk about PSA, and I have three key points, so to say. First of all, is prostate cancer a deadly disease in the elderly? Because usually, 10, 15 years ago in Sweden, we said if you are 70 or higher, then it is not a dangerous disease. But we have a register since more than 20 years now in Sweden where we can identify all Swedes because we have a personal number. So wherever he is, we can find him again. So that's the difference. So we use this to show whether this is a deadly disease or not in the old male. But let's start with some uh, epidemiology from the world. We can see here that Sweden, the incidence is very high. So it is in the Northern America and some Western European countries. And if we go down to Australia, we also have a very high incidence. But Africa is mainly blue in incidence, except for uh, South Africa. And then we look at the mortality map. What happens? Northern America turns blue, but Europe is still quite uh, on the um, brown side, and especially Sweden have a quite, quite a high mor uh, mortality still. But if we look again on Africa, the map changes completely. Again, you can see here the map of incidence, and you see it was blue, but now a lot of countries in Africa turns red or brown. The mortality rates are very high. I will talk mostly about uh, cancer incidence and mortality in Sweden and how to use PSA in, in uh, such a society where we have high incidence and high mortality. So it's really a problem. The cumulative risk for prostate cancer in Sweden is 14.7% until the age of 75, and every fourth man actually have it uh, at age 85. So this is a very common disease in the elderly. And this means that we have uh, more and more men living with this disease. The prevalence now is 90,000. And uh, at the same time, 5.6% of Swedish men die from prostate cancer, and, and that's quite high figure for a population of 9 million. And it's the same level as lung cancer, actually. In some years, prostate cancer have been the most common death uh, from cancer among men. Half of them were more than 80 years, and that's the problem. This is really a disease of the elderly. Uh, and um, if we look then on um, how uh, mortality, sorry, is in um, high-risk prostate cancer and regional metastatic disease without curative treatment, that is hormonal treatment only. And here we have different age groups. And we look at the, the age group above 75. And this is prostate cancer mortality. This is cardiovascular disease, and this is other. And this is high-risk disease. And you can see that almost one-third of the men die from prostate cancer, even in the highest age group. In the lower age groups, it's much uh, more common uh, cause of, of death. If we look at the regional metastatic, <coughs> the figures are even higher. So here, 40% almost die from, cardio from a prostate cancer, even in the age group above 75. So something must be done here. This is the same uh, diagram for a locally advanced disease without known metastasis, T3, T4s. And this is by age group, and this is by Gleason score. And here we have the age group above 85, and you thought these don't, men don't die from prostate cancer, they have locally advanced disease and we can treat them with hormones. What you see is that 40% die from prostate cancer in the Gleason 8 to 10 group, and in Gleason 7 group it's 30%. So this is really a deadly disease in the elderly male. So the question uh, is put forward then, shall we use PSA in all ages and not only in the young male? Or how do we handle this? We know the problems with PSA. Uh, there is a, a low, uh, poor specificity for screening and uh, the risk for overdiagnosis and treatment has worried us. And uh, we can see here BPH, the green men, and the red ones are cancer and there's a st substantial overlap, we know that. 
There are some data on, on uh, age and the PSA, and we know that with a higher age, the PSA also is higher. And that's uh, if we look at prostates above 30 gram or 40 gram, we can see that the normal levels is increasing with age. Can we then use uh, PSA for screening? Well, this has been a debate. We know the American study and we know the European study uh, that are, have different results. But I want to look at the Swedish part of the study. Why? Because we took PSA every second year in this study. And um, we have the longest follow-up, that is 14 years. And the population is 10,000 screened and 10,000 were control group. And the difference from the European study is that the control group was not informed at all that they were participated in the study. So they didn't know about PSA in the control group. So that's a difference. And what do we see? We see a substantial difference in a prostate cancer deaths after 14 years. You can see that among the attenders in the study, that those that really took the PSA and uh, draw the conclusions from the PSA value, there were more than 50% reduction in mortality. So this is definitely a method of reducing mortality, early detection and treatment. But you see here on the time scale that it takes um, approximately 10 years before these curves really differs. And the biggest difference is at 14 years, maybe will, it will be even larger difference beyond that. So this means if we want to save a 80 year old man from dying prostate cancer, we must detect his cancer maybe at his, before his 70s at least. So if we count then, the numbers needed to be invited for screening and the numbers needed to be diagnosed to save one life, we can see that 12 patients have to be diagnosed to save one prostate cancer death. And this is the same figure as for breast cancer and screening with mammography. So we have the same screening tool as we have for breast cancer if we use it in the right way. So we must use it in a smarter way than we do, not take it on everyone all the time. We must take it on the risk groups. And uh, this is one way of identifying risk groups. I talked about that uh, recently when I mentioned that PSA below one at the age of 50, or as in this case, age 60, you can see that the risk of having prostate cancer, that is the red curves, and uh, the risk of dying from prostate cancer, the blue curves, are at a very low level if you have a prostate a PSA uh, below one at the age of 60. The higher the PSA, the risk increases. But th with this uh, approach, we can say to those that have below one at the age of 60, you don't need any PSA tests anymore, and we can save all them the PSA. In Sweden, it's very common to go and test the PSA several times a year, and that's no use, obviously. So uh, when we then look at higher PSAs, what is the risk within eight years in different PSA intervals? This is also data from the Swedish screening study. And here you can see that if we move to above seven, uh, we have a 50% risk of having prostate cancer and above 10, three out of four have prostate cancer within almost eight years follow up. So here we can again identify risk groups. And if we're talking about the aging male, the elderly, elderly male, maybe we should elevate the normal value to around seven. And this has actually been uh, proven in several studies. It was suggested already in the 90s by Osterling to have a, a 6.5 normal level cutoff uh, above 70. And Antoni confirmed this in a large population study he came up with a suggestion 6.9. So we have adapted that in the Swedish healthcare system now nationally that we have uh, age uh, specific uh, normal values for PSA having uh, uh, 6.5 for the elderly age group. When to stop PSA testing? Well, this is a problem because here we have a study looking at those above 75 years old. And you can see the PSA is still a predictor of prostate cancer death. If you have a PSA above 3.5 uh, at this age, 
then you have a significant increased risk of dying from prostate cancer and also having high-risk prostate cancer because high-risk prostate cancer is the cancer that kills our patients. Another tool to uh, use to, to really identify risk patients is the risk calculator. But what do we have here? We have race. We just heard that the black men have a high risk, so that should be uh, in. And also age, of course, PSA level, family history of prostate cancer is important. And also the, the outcome of digital rectal examination, uh, examination to some extent. And if they had prior prostate biopsy or not is also a known uh, uh, risk factor if they haven't had that. So then you can calculate the cancer risk and then you can make it a, a better decision than just on the PSA. So uh, the, my last point here in the talk is to, that we also must consider comorbidity when we use PSA in the elderly. This is uh, curves of how we treat patients in different age groups in Sweden. And this is a national population study from our register, so all Swedes are included. And what you can see is that hormonal therapy increases, and above 70, it really rises to very high level as primary treatment. And at the same time, radical prostatectomy goes down, and uh, also radiation treatment. And we have really focused on localized low-risk disease for surgery and radiation therapy, but we have now, during the last five to 10 years, changed our focus to treat more aggressively in higher age with radiotherapy and radical prostatectomy based on several outcomes of studies showing an improved survival. Among them, SBCG7, that showed that radiotherapy together with hormonal therapy had a, a precise uh, uh, a figure of 20% better mortality after 14 years. So it's a really a big difference. And that was mostly locally advanced disease, and we can see that we treat most of these patients with hormonal therapy and less with radiotherapy above 70 years. So this must be changed in some way, but we must also consider comorbidity. This is uh, also extracted data from the, our registers in Sweden, population-based data. And what we can see here is that the dark bar is the expected survival uh, of on te uh, over 10 years period of time. And we can see that if you are below 65 and have no comorbidities, then you're almost 100% sure to live another 10 years. And the light bar is how many receive curative inten uh, treatment with curative intention, that is radical prostatectomy or radiotherapy for prostate cancer. And you can see, focus on these three. If we look at 70 to 74 years, the expected mortality, this is comorbidity one. Co uh, expected mortality is 50% approximately. Most of these patients uh, receive actually uh, treatment with curative intention. But if we look at the next bar here, 75 to 79, we see that they have the, exactly the same expected mortality, but almost none receive curative treatment. So here we must change our thinking. When we decide on treatment on patients, we must consider comorbidity. If we look at the below 65 years old, they have a less expected survival, but they receive substantially more curative treatment than those 75 to 79. So this is also something to rethink about, that we must consider comorbidity. So this is the, the last diagram I have. And here we compare Sweden to England and Norway. And actually, Sweden has been more proactive with PSA than the other countries. And we can see this is the relative mortality in prostate cancer patients five years from diagnosis. And you can see that, especially in the high age group, Still, there is a, a huge difference where Sweden is better than England, actually. But I think this is, there's much more to do uh, in this older age group by using PSA in a smart way and selecting patients for treatment better. So my conclusion is that high-risk locally advanced prostate cancer is a deadly disease also in the elderly, and curative treatment for high-risk has been 
uh, seems to be too, lo too low in Sweden. Age-specific BSA levels should be used to avoid overdiagnosis, and this is also supported in European guidelines. Risk calculator can be used to improve the specificity for PSA. Uh, comorbidity must be considered in both testing, diagnosis, and treatment of prostate cancer, and PSA shall be used in a smart way in all ages. Thank you.